just going to get set up here on Periscope as well. Let me make sure this is showing up in the group properly. Oh, we've got a new joiner. Awesome. Hello, just getting all this uh, technology figured out. We'll get started in just a second. Can you guys all see this in the Facebook group? Oh, it seems like it's working. Great, great. That's awesome. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon. I hope everyone's having a lovely Sunday. I am enjoying my day so far. I went to a yoga class this morning, had a little lunch, been doing a little food prep. Uh, this is weird to see myself in the group. I'm just going to turn this off. <laughs> Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robin, and I am the Hormone Diva, a women's holistic nutritionist. Very excited to be chatting with you all this afternoon. Um, please feel free, whether you're on Periscope or you're on Facebook Live, because I'm on both of these right now, please feel free to introduce yourself. Just type, type in the comments, tell me your name, where you're from, so that I can give you a shout out. Oh, we've got one live viewer in the group, in the Facebook group. That's awesome. <laughs> please introduce introduce yourself so I can uh, give you guys some shout outs that's awesome I sent out a little email about a half hour ago telling you guys about this so I hope you guys are going to enjoy we're talking about bringing back your periods so a really really common issue with women is um, absent periods right it's technically called amenorrhea if they don't show up within you know three to six months or so but you can also just have irregular periods um, that's something that I struggled with for a long time uh, because of the polycystic ovarian syndrome that I have. Um, it took me a really long time to get my periods balanced out and I suffered a lot because it was kind of like um, PMS just never went away <laughs> essentially because I wasn't getting my period at all. So you know just feeling crappy all the time hey I see a few more people joining in the Facebook group that's awesome welcome ladies hello hello please feel free to uh, say hey in the comments as well so we're talking about bringing back your period again my name is Robin I'm the hormone diva women's holistic nutritionist you can see my little fish tank in the background <laughs> Uh, so, I'm going to talk about some natural remedies for bringing back your period today. I've done a live periscope before on some different causes of why your period may be absent or irregular, so I highly recommend going to check that out. There's also a blog on my website about delayed periods that'll tell you all about the causes. So I'm not really going to talk about that too much today, I just want to talk about how to fix it, right? Let's give you some real tangible tools so that you can help to bring back your period, reduce any um, discomfort that you may be experiencing, like constant PMS mood swings, all that kind of stuff as well. So let's get right to it. Part of absent periods, irregular periods, is a deficiency in progesterone for many women. Not for everyone necessarily, but for many women. A deficiency in progesterone is part and parcel of what's going on. So when we think about natural remedies to bring your period back, we have to think about what can we do to raise progesterone. There are lots and lots of things that we can do for this, but I'm gonna go over a few little remedies that are really easy to implement. They're very, very safe to take as well. And if you have any questions about anything that I'm about to talk about or questions beyond that, please feel free to comment. If you're on Periscope, comment, type it in. Facebook Live, for you two ladies who are watching, please feel free to type out any questions you have in as well. So how do we raise progesterone? What can we use natural remedies to raise progesterone and help to bring back your period or to regulate it if it's just a little bit irregular? There are three natural remedies that I want to talk to in regards to this. The first one is vitamin C. So obviously, you know, we've all heard of vitamin C and how it's so wonderful for our immune system. If we have colds, flus, all of that kind of stuff, allergies, really taking vitamin C to help boost our immune system. But not only is vitamin C fabulous for that reason, it's also great to help regulate your period because it helps to increase progesterone. So that's awesome. And you don't even need to take that much of it, actually. In the studies that have been done around this progesterone vitamin C connection, um, they've talked about as little as taking like 750 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams or, or one gram per day to help with this issue. So really, really easy to do. 
Um, there's a lot of different supplements out there when it comes to vitamin C. So the only thing that I would say is just be careful that you're not getting one that's full of sugar, right? Like a lot of those vitamin C chewables um, or the powders that you can mix to make a drink, they all have uh, added sugars or artificial sweeteners, which might not be so good. So I'm really partial to capsules, but you can also get plain vitamin C powder that doesn't have any flavoring or anything like that. Um, so you can mix that in water as well. So 750 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C can be very helpful. Generally what I do with vitamin C when I'm working with a private client and we're trying to use vitamin C to regulate the cycle is to have that as a daily base, so 750 to 1,000 milligrams, and then once ovulation has occurred, or the last two weeks or so in your cycle, increase that a little bit. So vitamin C is quite safe. You'll know that you've taken too much if you have loose bowels, but that's really the only thing that you can um, kind of have as an adverse reaction for most people, so fairly safe. So you could even double that like in the last two weeks um, of your cycle to really help boost that progesterone so that you're gonna have a healthy period. So that's number one, to raise progesterone, bring back your period, vitamin C. Number two, is vitamin B6. So vitamins are really underrated. Like we don't necessarily need all these crazy superfoods and herbs and spices, although I love them so much for health balancing and we're gonna talk about herbs too. Some of the basics, right? Vitamin C, vitamin B6, very, very helpful in regulating periods. So what's the deal with vitamin B6? Well, vitamin B6 actually helps to raise progesterone just like vitamin C does. So very, very helpful. Um, it's often very helpful as well if with your absent or irregular periods or even just with your periods when they come, you have a lot of mood swings. So if you tend towards anxiety or depression, um, vitamin B6 can be very helpful here. And also if you get that kind of PMS bloating stuff happening, so uh, if you have a lot of bloating or maybe you're retaining water, maybe you have like breast pain, tenderness, that kind of stuff, um, then vitamin B6 can be really, really helpful here. Now, one thing to note about vitamin B6 is that there are a lot of other B vitamins and they tend to work best all together. So when you keep them grouped together, they're going to work best. So get a B vitamin complex, which will have everything in it, and you can even find different ones that have extra vitamin B6 in them compared to the rest, so just keep your eyes peeled for that or just take extra B6 along with your B complex. Very, very helpful in regulating your cycles and getting rid of PMS mood swings, all of that good stuff that we talked about as well. So, number one, vitamin C to bring back your period. Number two, vitamin B6. Very, very easy. You can also use foods to help with this as well. So eating lots of vitamin C foods, vitamin B6 foods, um, any leafy greens really are going to have both of these things in it. So the more greens you can get into your body, the better. And there's one more remedy to help raise progesterone and balance cycles that I want to talk about before we get into some diet hacks, different stuff like that to bring your period back. And I want to talk about cinnamon. So cinnamon, obviously, you know, we've all had cinnamon before in, uh, in our food. So desserts, um, you know, smoothies even, whatever you're making, you might have used cinnamon quite a bit. And it's delicious, right? It's awesome. But it also has a lot of medicinal value, believe it or not. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite medicinal herbs to use when I'm working with women who have hormonal imbalances. And part of the, re well, there's two reasons for that. So the first one, of course, is that it raises progesterone. So that's what we're talking about here. That's a lot of what's going on when it comes to irregular and absent periods. So you can use cinnamon for this purpose as well. And also, cinnamon helps to balance your blood sugar. So blood sugar is really, really important when it comes to um, balancing any kind of hormonal imbalance. So if you've heard me talk before, whether it's been on like a Periscope, on a webinar, maybe you've read my blogs, whatever, I talk about blood sugar ad nauseum, really, um, because it's so, so important. It's one of the main root causes of hormonal imbalances, and cinnamon is a fantastic remedy for this, so very helpful. You can use cinnamon, of course, as the food, you know, sprinkled on your food, whatever, and if you're gonna do it that way, then I would aim for sure for a couple of, uh, of teaspoons a day. So, you know, one to two teaspoons of the ground powder, you can dump it in your smoothie, or if you're making some kind of like a hot porridge-based breakfast, you can put it in there. Whatever you're making, put in the cinnamon. 
or if you want to do it um, a little bit more medicinally by using it almost as a supplement, then that's great too. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. So obviously you can just get capsules of cinnamon. They're available at health food stores, online, whatever. Just make sure you get a really quality one. I really like New Chapter as a brand. They have a product called Cinnamon Force, just in case you need some recommendations there. Highly recommend that one. But I'm a big fan of using cinnamon as a tincture. So what this means essentially is that the medicinal benefits of cinnamon have been extracted into usually alcohol, sometimes vegetable glycerin, just depends on the company and what their methods are. Um, and you would just be taking drops of this daily, essentially, and you can follow the directions that are on the bottle and you'll be good to go. So that's our third one. So we had vitamin C, vitamin B6, and cinnamon all three fabulous remedies for bringing back your period if it's been absent for a really long time for regulating your cycles if you just never know when they're going to come they're very irregular that's sort of what i was dealing with um, and even like pmse stuff right very very helpful so vitamin c vitamin b6 and cinnamon i want to continue to talk a little bit more about herbal support so cinnamon of course is a medicinal herb that you can use to support your healthy menstrual cycle but there's a couple other herbs that can help as well I'm just going to have a little sippy of my green juice. I've got um, cucumber, spinach, peaches, and local watermelon, and lime, and ginger in this one today. So very good mix. Okay. Herbal support beyond cinnamon. What else can we use? A really helpful one um, that you may have heard of before. Sometimes it's kind of thought of as like an old wives tale, but it's not really. It's very, very helpful. Is red raspberry leaf. So literally the leaves from raspberry plants, um, if you have a raspberry plant in your yard or something, then by all means use them fresh. But of course you can get it uh, at health food stores in the form of like tea bags or loose tea. Red raspberry leaf is very, very helpful for a couple of reasons. One, it's just an overall general tonic for women's health. So it's got lots of vitamins and minerals in there. Um, it's got a very toning effect to the uterus. So it's really gonna help strengthen your reproductive system and can also help um, manage things a little bit. So this is much more mild red raspberry than the other remedies that we were talking about already, but it's a really good add-on. It's a very mild, delicious tea, very easy to make, um, so I would highly recommend using that as well if you can, as a tea. You can take it daily, no problem at all, very safe in pregnancy as well, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, it's actually been noted that women who are pregnant and they use red raspberry leaf like as a tea throughout their uh, pregnancy actually maybe have a little bit less uh, trouble with their labor. So interesting thing to note there as well, but could be helpful in regulating your cycles. You have to use it kind of over a little while to see how it works for you. Another herb, which is very, very popular. Um, there's a lot of information out there, you know, in the World Wide Web about uh, this herb and it's called Vitex. You may have also heard of it called Chase Tree Berry. Um, either one is fine, same, you know, same name, whatever. And it's a little berry. Usually you'll get them dried um, if you get the actual dried herb itself. Otherwise, you know, capsules, uh, tincture, whatever works for you is, is totally fine. Vitex is possibly a progesterone increaser. So while the mechanism isn't entirely known on this particular herb, it's been used for hundreds of years. And what they think is that it helps our periods, our menstrual cycles, because of its action on the brain. So it's very helpful in regulating how our brain is telling our bodies to make hormones. So that's kind of the mechanism when it comes to Vitex. Now, sometimes it's touted as kind of like a cure-all for women's health issues, um, especially if you have PMS, um, irregular absent periods, whatever the case may be. But the truth is it doesn't work for everyone. For me, it didn't do anything. For some people, it's you know, the answer to their problems and they take that and they're totally fine after. So you really don't know with Vitex until you try. Um, but if you do know that you have uh, like a low progesterone type issue, if you suffer from a lot of PMS, like the mood swings, all of that kind of stuff, then definitely Vitex uh, could be helpful for you. So I would definitely give it a try. It certainly can't hurt. Um, but it does take a while to work, so be consistent with it. Give it about three full menstrual cycles, so right from day one of bleeding right till the next day one of bleeding is one cycle. 
So even if your cycles are like super long, you need to give it that much time, you know, three full cycles for it to really work. And if after that you don't really notice anything, then it's not for you. Chuck it and we can try something else, right? But that's a really, really popular one. Is there any questions so far about any of this kind of stuff? I'm trying to monitor both the, uh, the Facebook Live and the Periscope uh, ladies here. So if there's any questions, please feel free. Type it in. If you're enjoying what you're hearing so far on Periscope, please double tap. Give me some hearts so that I know that you love what you are seeing today. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. So we talked about some supportive stuff. So we talked about vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin B6. We talked about some herbs, cinnamon, vitex, and red raspberry leaf. Now let's talk about diet because diet is infinitely more important than any supplement you could take. Although I find that women who have either irregular or absent periods definitely need both at the beginning, I find, just uh, to give them some more support, their bodies more support. So if that's you, take a couple of those little remedies that I suggested, take a couple of these diet tips I'm about to talk about, and uh, you should be well on your way. So diet, what can we do with our food to help regulate our periods? Like how, how the heck, does that even work? Does it even matter? Yes, it matters, and yes, it works, for sure. And one of the main reasons that you need to pay attention to your diet when you are trying to balance your hormones, regulate your periods, all of that kind of stuff, is to balance your blood sugar. So here we go with that blood sugar stuff again. Highly recommend that you um, check out more blood sugar information on my website. There's tons of it there, thehormonediva.com so you can get a better idea of the mechanisms behind that because I'm not going to talk about it too much today. I just want to stick with the remedies. So how do we balance our blood sugar with food so that we can regulate our cycles, bring back our periods, and just feel really great all around? So number one, eat the rainbow. It's not just a saying, right? It's very, very important for your overall health. The more variety that you're eating in your fruits, your veggies, your proteins, your fats, everything, the more nutrients that you're going to get overall. So you're going to get a much more wide variety of nutrients, so vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, different types of fats, different types of amino acids, which are protein building blocks, all of this kind of stuff. So eat the rainbow as much as possible, and always put a focus on green uh, when, when you're starting as a base. Getting greens into your diet a couple of times a day, fantastic. fan freaking tastic for balancing your hormones. So do not skip that. If you take away nothing from this today, eat more greens, eat the rainbow. Beyond this, because of course you'll be getting lots of nutrients from eating so many varieties of foods, you'll be getting lots of beautiful fiber to balance your blood sugar, all of these awesome things. What else can we do with our diet to help regulate our periods, bring them back into balance? Increase healthy fats. So that's number two. So number one, eat the rainbow. Number two, increase your healthy fats. The low fat trend that has been going on for at least the last 20 years is a load of shit okay if you are following this low fat fat free diets whatever trying to buy everything on your grocery list low fat as possible you know sauteing and water instead of oil whatever stop right now please 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 your hormones will thank you i promise so how do we increase our fats, right? Oh, thank you for the hearts. I so, so appreciate that. Well, this is pretty cool. Facebook Live and Periscope at once. So healthy fats. <laughs> what are we going to do about the healthy fats here? It's important to get at least one to two tablespoons of added fats to each of your meals, okay? So sometimes this takes a little bit of um, consciousness of planning because we're so used to eating a certain way and maybe your dinners usually are like, uh, you know, a boneless, skinless chicken breast that's been cooked and maybe you have some steamed broccoli with it. Maybe you have a little bit of a side salad with a low fat store-bought dressing, something like that. Not ideal. So you need to put a more conscious effort into putting fats into your life. So how can we do that? What are some examples? So there's lots of different healthy fats. If you know any healthy fats, please type I want to see what you guys know. Type in the comments, Periscope, you can type it in, Facebook Live, whoever. I'm just curious. I want to know, does anybody, coconut, yes, absolutely. Amy, awesome. Great to see you here. Coconut is 
absolutely fabulous, especially for your hormones actually can be very helpful. And there's tons of different ways to get coconut as a healthy fat. So you can use coconut oil, very, very helpful. You can use coconut itself, like the shredded coconut. Um, you can get like coconut chips now, like there's all kinds of crazy stuff. And coconut milk, of course. I always keep some cans of coconut milk on hand. Uh, and I use that when I make things like chia pudding, which is, you know, a fat bomb in itself, which is awesome. So coconut, awesome. Thanks for that, Amy. Really appreciate it. Some other ideas. Avocados, very, very high in monounsaturated fatty acids. And avocados traditionally, like over years and years, have been thought of as like a fertility symbol because they're really helpful for the reproductive system. And that's actually true. Even though it's been used as a symbol for so long, these people didn't really understand the physiology of it physiology of it. Um, it's actually very good for your reproductive system and your fertility, if that's a concern for you. So avocados, you can either use avocado oil. That is an oil I love to use when I make homemade mayo because I don't like the store-bought stuff. It's full of crappy oils, fillers, chemicals, who knows what. I don't want any part of that. So I make a mayo that takes like 10 seconds to make with a little blender. I use avocado oil, but you can also use the avocados themselves. So the actual fruit, um, just slice it up, have it with your lunch. A quarter to a third of an avocado would be a good portion size if you're curious when it comes to adding fats to your meals. But you know, it's not really gonna be a big deal if you have a bit more than that. Um, I like to put them in smoothies as well. I'm not a huge fan of, um, a lot of people put bananas in smoothies for like a more creamy texture. I'm not very, uh, happy about that because of the big sugar load that gives you, but avocados will give you that same creamy texture in your smoothies without giving you that sugar hit. And instead you'll be getting like beautiful healthy fats, magnesium, vitamins, minerals, all of this good stuff. So avocados. So avocados, coconuts, also nuts and seeds of all types, especially chia seeds and hemp seeds. Very helpful. Uh, much more widely available now than they were even two, three years ago. So most large grocery stores will carry chia seeds and hemp seeds. Um, if you don't know what to do with them, chia seeds make a really delicious pudding. Look it up on my website. There's a recipe for chia seed pudding. It's often a breakfast of mine with a bit of fruit or a bit of grain-free granola on top. But any nuts and seeds you can add into your life, even nut butter. So almond butter, cashew butter is a huge favorite of mine, sunflower seed butter, tahini, which is essentially sesame seed butter, any of this kind of stuff. Very, very helpful. Beyond that, the nuts and seeds, avocados, coconuts, also butter itself is awesome. I am a butter believer, seriously. It has beautiful fats that are really antimicrobial, so that means it's gonna help prevent uh, colds and flus, help your immune system. It's also very healing to the gut. Uh, if you have issues with dairy, as many of us do, um, then don't necessarily use butter, but maybe try ghee. That's G-H-E-E, -E, ghee. Very, very helpful, very healing to the gut. And essentially what has been done is they've taken butter and they've cooked all the milk solids out of it. So there's not really gonna be any lactose, casein, whey, any of that kind of stuff. It's pretty much all been cooked out when they, they make ghee and it's usually like a self, uh, shelf stable fat. Very, very delicious, can be used the same way as butter. That's what I use most of the time for myself. Um, but any of those kind of stuff would be great. Um, so those are some examples of healthy fats. And again, to recap, adding an additional one to two tablespoons of fat to each of your meals is the best way to go. Oh, Amy says, ghee really helped my PMS symptoms. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel like it's so underutilized. Um, it is starting to gain a little bit more popularity, which I'm happy to see, but um, a lot of people still aren't super familiar with it. So ghee very very helpful and the more we can get these kind of healthy fats the better and the reason why besides of course balancing our blood sugar is because our hormones like estrogen progesterone which we already talked about testosterone cortisol our stress hormone they're all made from fat ladies they're all made from fat so if you don't have enough your hormones are going to be really fucked up and that's just the bottom line here so Make sure that you're getting the fats that you need, adding them to every single meal and also in snacks if you're snacking too. Get those fats in. So that was our first two diet tips. So one was to eat the rainbow, eat as much variety as possible. 
Number two was to increase your healthy fats, making sure you're getting at least one to two tablespoons of added fat per meal. And the third diet tip that I wanted to give you guys uh, this Sunday afternoon is to um, monitor your protein intake. So obviously, you know, you don't need to be having tons and tons of protein, like that can be really hard on your kidneys. And a lot of people can't digest it as well. They find they get really gassy and stuff like that if you have too much but you do need to get an adequate amount. So what does that actually mean? Generally what I recommend is between 20 and 30 grams of protein with every meal. And that usually does the trick. Uh, if you're having snacks, anywhere between five and 10 grams of protein or more per snack is fabulous as well. Whatever's gonna work for you is best. And there's lots and lots of different protein sources out there. Now, personally, I am not a proponent of a completely animal-free lifestyle. So veganism for hormones is really not the best. However, you can get adequate protein as a vegetarian if you're really um, careful about it is, is important. But for everyone else who is omnivores, things like, and, and get grass-fed, pasture-raised, organic, all that stuff as much as possible with any of these proteins. So. Chicken, very helpful. Turkey is a great one. Lamb, bison, uh, a little bit of beef is okay, but it shouldn't be a main staple because it's quite inflammatory and can increase estrogen, which is often too high in most women anyway. Um, but a little bit of that is okay. A little bit of pork if you, if you want. I'm a big bacon person, so I get like nitrate-free bacon, like no additives or anything like that. It looks a little different, uh, but you don't get all the chemicals in, so a much better choice. So we said, um, oh, and fish too. We haven't even talked about fish at all. So not only will fish and seafood, like shrimp, lobster, crab, um, salmon, sardines, herring, mackerel, cod, haddock, halibut, you know, you name it, whatever, not only will these give you protein that is really really important for your hormonal balance for your overall well sense of well-being for you know weight management all of this a lot of them will also give you healthy fats so not all seafood will do this but there are some higher fat uh, fishes in the ocean <laughs> that can be really helpful including salmon okay salmon sardines is a great one uh, they're really not as bad as you think just try just get a can try it make like a Instead of a tuna salad or a salmon salad, make it with sardines. I love it with crackers or, or on like a gluten-free or a sprouted grain bread, whatever is your preference. Um, sardines are awesome. What else? Herring and mackerel, which I think I already mentioned, those are really high fat, very beautiful, very healthy sources of fish um, in your diet. So any of these kind of things. So one was eat the rainbow. So lots of veggies, especially your greens. Number two was to have more healthy fats like coconut products, avocados, nuts and seeds, fish, uh, the fat that's naturally occurring in your animal proteins, ghee, all that good stuff, butter, whatever. And then number three was protein. So 20 to 30 grams per meal, five to 10 grams per snack, and make sure it's the highest quality protein you can find. So for example, if you want to have chicken as your protein and you go and you pick up like some chicken strips, like breaded, fried, like chicken fingers, whatever, the quality of the protein in those processed items is going to be shit compared to an actual pasture raised chicken, like a whole chicken, chicken breast, legs, whatever part you like to eat. So really make sure to pay attention to quality. Quality matters as much if not more, then quantity matters. So those are just a couple of tips there. We've talked about quite a bit today, lots of remedies, lots of different things that you can do to help regulate your period, bring back your period, balance your hormones in general, right? All of this information can be used for anyone trying to balance hormones. So I wanna know if anyone else has any questions. Questions, comments, concerns, I am here and ready to answer if you have any. Anybody with questions? Oh, I'm really digging this juice. If you have a juicer, highly recommend putting peaches in. It's pretty awesome. And watermelon. It's like so summery. It's so nice when I finally get to have um, local fruit, right? Where I live, I'm in Ontario, Canada, just east of Toronto for your information. <laughs> but we have a very short growing season here, so I'm always excited when I get to have 
local stuff, local fruits, local veggies, and I am just, you know, knee deep in it right now. It's awesome. Any other questions, comments? I see there's still people watching. Concerns? No? I think everybody's good. I will be back doing another one of these on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. I have created, if you are part of my, if you're watching on Periscope, if you are part of my Happy Hormone Sisterhood Facebook group, private group, you will notice I have uploaded to the files section my August live stream schedule. So we're going to be doing these a couple of times a week as much as possible so that I can bring you answers to all your burning questions. So I'm going to be back Tuesday, um, which is the 10th or the 9th, whatever, of August, 7 p.m. Eastern. I think we're doing a Q&A that night, but don't quote me on that. You can find it all in the file uh, in my Happy Hormone Sisterhood Facebook group. If you're already in the group and you're watching from the live stream in the Facebook group, check the file section, download the PDF. You can see when I'm going to be coming on because there might be different topics that interest you and some that don't, and that's awesome. And I'm also doing a few Q&As. So if you have questions, you can join me live on the Q&A uh, times and we can talk about them then. You can email me your questions, whatever you want to do, and uh, we'll get rolling on this. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone has a great rest of your Sunday. I'm going to figure out how to turn off these live streams now. You'll be able to see this live stream within the group permanently. The video will be there. Periscope people, this is only available for the next 24 hours on the Periscope app. Or you can join my Happy Hormones Sisterhood Facebook community, and you can see it anytime. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everyone. I'm going to do some more food prep and then some relaxation. And I'll be seeing you guys on Tuesday. Bye-bye.